Hello guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Luke and in today's video, I would like to show you how to create this simple effect. Now this was a user request. So as I scroll down the page, you'll see the header kind of shrinks in width and changes color like this. Now this is in a fixed position. There's nothing too special about it, but it does give a very nice unique effect. So in Bricks Builder, if I change this to light mode and save and then refresh, you can see that it works out of the box because I'm using variables with this and we get the same effect in the opposite colors. So let's get started. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is add a new template for our header. So in Bricks template, let's add new template. I'm just gonna call this header and make sure to select header from the template type. Let's edit with Bricks. Okay, so the first thing we need is a section and within the section, I'm gonna add a block, which is gonna be my main nav. And I'm also just gonna change this to light mode to make my life easier. I'm gonna rename this nav bar. Now in here, I want three blocks. So we'll have a left, right and center as well. In the left block, we want our logo. In the middle, we want our links and on the right side we can have a CTA or button or something like that. So I'm just going to label these. For now let's just use an icon to make life simple. In the center I'm just going to add one link for now and on the right let's go ahead and add a button element and I'm just going to add a button class to this and I'm also going to make the text small. Okay, so now I'm just going to add some classes to these elements so that we can style everything up accordingly. Now I am going to use this uh, BEM generator here. This will be available in Core Framework in a future update. Right now it's just a prototype, but basically yeah, I'm just going to add some BEM classes to all of these elements. That's all I'm doing right here. Okay, so for my navbar, what I want to do is make it a row. I want to center everything. For my icon, I want to make this a little bit smaller. Now bar center also needs to be a row and everything centered. For the right, I just want to push everything to the right side. Coming back here, I want to make sure everything is centered that way. I'll also add a column gap here of M. I'll just duplicate this link a couple more times. And then for the main nav bar, what I want to do is I'm just going to add a little bit of padding. Nothing too much at the top and bottom. And then for each side, let's do medium, something like that. And then I also want to give it a radius. So let's go to border. I'm gonna do radius full. And I want that to be applied everywhere. I do think there could be a little bit more padding on the top. So let me just do that. I'm gonna change this to three XS, uh, maybe two. Okay, let's just go with XS top and bottom. Yeah, that's better. Okay, the text links, uh, let's give them a variable color. So typography color, I'm gonna give them a color of dark. And I also wanna give my icon a color of dark as well. Okay, the next thing I wanna do is come up to the section. Now I should give this a class as well. Let's just call it nav section. And then I want to make the padding a little bit less because this is a little bit too high for me. So let's just do two XS top and bottom. And finally, we need to make this position fixed. So if I scroll down, it's always going to be here. I'll just show you a quick example of that. So if I just add a section underneath and I make the height 200 viewport height, for example, just so we can scroll. So I'm scrolling here and you can see it is fixed in place. Okay, so let's remove that. Okay, the last thing I want to do is on the container, I just want to make sure that this nav bar is always going to be in the middle because when we scroll down, we want to reduce the width of this and we don't want it to be justified left. We always want it to be in the center even when the width gets smaller. So let's go to the container. Let's call this nav section container. And let's just make sure that it is going to be in the center. So I'm going to save this. And now let's go and create a page just so that we can fill it with some dummy content. Okay, so add new page. I'm going to call this header example page. Publish and let's edit with bricks. Okay, so just to make my life easier, what I'm going to do is just import a couple of templates here from Violet. Make sure import images is checked here. And I'm just gonna pick out a couple of examples. 
So I'll insert this one and I'm going to insert a couple more, I think. Let's do this one and let's import one more. Uh, let's just do this one here. Okay, I'm just going to sign my codes. And the last thing I want to do is because this um, header here is fixed, I just want to add some more padding to my first section up here. All right, so that should give us some scrolling space. Okay, so I've just noticed a couple of spacing issues here. Now I have just updated my core framework. So all I'm going to do is just view this on the front end, make sure I have this open and let's go to WordPress core framework and let's just make sure that we save this and that's fixed it. So sometimes, yeah, if you update uh, core framework, it just needs a good resave. Okay, so as you can see, we have some dummy content on this page and our header here is in a fixed position, which is quite nice. That's exactly what we want. And now we are ready to edit this header or navigation in motion page. So let's open up motion page. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead here and create a new timeline and I'm gonna call this custom header. Now let's just open up the page that we made so we can see the example. And this effect is going to be happening as we scroll. So let's choose here scroll trigger and I want to lock this to the scroll bar. And my personal preference here always is 0.3 seconds. Now what we want to do is target the nav itself. So let's just go ahead and target that first of all. Now as you can see, I'm having some difficulty targeting that and that's because the content underneath is overlapping our header section. So what we can do very quickly is go back to Bricks Builder and let's open up our header. So let's go back to Templates, Header, Edit with Bricks. And all I'm going to do is change the Z index here. Now I could just target this class uh, manually, but I just wanted to show you why the scanner is not working in this case. So Z index, let's just change that to 10. And then in motion page, let's refresh. And now as you can see, I can actually scan that and target the nav bar. Okay, cool. So as I scroll, what do we want to happen? First of all, we want to change the width. Now this is the original position, so that's absolutely fine. So let's go to the two tab. And the first thing I'm going to change is the width. So let's go to dimensions. I'm going to use pixels and let's first of all, try 800. So you could see that change here. Now I don't want it to change here. So I need to change my start and end viewports. Let's scroll back up to the top here. So I want this animation to start when the top of my nav hits the top of the page. So as you can imagine when I'm scrolling now it is in a fixed position, but let's imagine this is actually going to be moving up. Okay. So when the top of this nav reaches the top of here, so that means the first element top, the navigation's top reaches zero pixels. 0% is fine too, but let's use pixels in this case. So you can see now the start line is right at the top flush. So as soon as this imaginary line for my navigation hits that green line, the animation is going to start. You can see that taking effect already, but we want this to be a little bit smoother. So we want it to end when the top of the navigation reaches, for example, minus 300 pixels. Okay. So let's also change this to top. We'll change this to pixels and we'll do minus 300. So now the red line, you can't see it anymore because it's gone off to the top of the page. So now when I scroll, you can see it's much more subtle and it's much more in line with the scroll bar. And that's exactly the effect I want. Okay. So the next thing I want to change also on the nav bar is the background color because I'm using core framework. I'm using variables. It is currently set to, uh, I believe nothing actually. Let me just double check. So if I go back to bricks nav bar and yeah, background is currently nothing. Now you could leave it transparent. That's absolutely fine, but I do want to show you a troubleshooting tip. So what I'm going to do is set this to the same color as my background. So BG body. Now you're not going to see it change because it's the same color. Let me save this and then back in motion page, just refresh. And then as I scroll, what I want to do is background color. I want to change this to a dark color. So let's use variable dark. Okay. So now as you can see, it becomes dark. Now this is the troubleshooting tip that I wanted to show you. You can see as I scroll down, it's actually going to like a um, subtle yellow and like a green to a blue and a purple before it reaches my dark color. 
and I'm going to show you why that's happening in a second. So the next thing I want to do, remember our text links, they have a DAC variable on them right now. So I want to target our navigation links. So to do that, let's add an animation node and this time let's target our links. Okay. So let's target our BEM class here. And on the two, we want to change the color text color to this time. Let's do a var light because they're currently dark. So as I scroll down, each of them is going to become a light color. And the final thing to change is our icon. So once again, we will add an animation node and let's select our icon. Let's use the BEM class that we created. And in this case, we can once again, use the text color and we'll do var light once again. Okay, so that's it. That is basically the navigation. Now let's just fix this very strange color issue that we're having here. And I'll show you why this is happening right now. So if you're using core framework, I want you to open it up and let's inspect our colors. All right, so here's my colors in core framework. Now in motion page, this background color, it is coming from a BG body to a light. Okay, so if we go to BG body, let's take a look at this color. So they're all currently using hex values. Now what I'm gonna do is change these to HSLA. Uh, and I'll show you why I'm doing this. HSLA. Okay, I'm just going to save changes. So now when we get this wheel, you can see the BG body currently has no saturation, which is good. But if I scroll down here to the light and dark, now you can see this dark variable has a little bit of a saturation in it and it's very slightly purple. So if you want a linear transition from dark to light or light to dark, there cannot be any saturation in your color because it's going to cycle through the hues in order to get to where it needs to go. So just keep this in mind. So you'll just need to make sure that there's no saturation in your colors. So I'm going to remove the saturation from both of these. You can see there's also very, very slight saturation here as well. And there. So I've removed all of the saturations from light and I'm just going to make sure that my BG body also has no saturation in it, which it looks like it does not. So if I save changes here now back in motion page, I'm going to refresh and now you can see it is a much more linear transition, which is what we wanted. So I've already saved my timeline. Let's view it on the front. So this is the page. As I scroll down, we get this nice transition with a fixed header that looks pretty good. And the nice thing about this is because I'm using variables, if I change my theme to a dark theme and refresh the page, this will work out of the box. So now as I scroll down, because we're using variables, once again, this will just automatically work. So there you have it guys, a simple tutorial, but an effective header animation. I hope you like it and if you do, please don't forget to give us a thumbs up and we will be back very soon with another video. Thank you.